So, oh, I guess it's raining. Sorry if you hear some rain. Um, this is to add to my doom and gloomy kind of videos at the moment. I will, honestly, I will have something positive to say at some stage, uh, I promise. And, uh, and as soon as I do, I shall do a video on it. Um, but this is a bit of an impromptu video that I wasn't expecting to do, but I had an email um, recently uh, from a customer uh, of, of one of the recent um, uh, dealers to go into administration with a bit of an issue they had. And I thought it might be a good idea to kind of just um, tell you how to maybe avoid this situation that this, this person's found themselves in. Uh, and to protect yourself against what could happen if you find yourself with a deposit with a manufacturer, sorry, with a dealer, uh, or you haven't picked a caravan up, or you know whatever situation you may well be in when you phone up to pick your caravan up and uh, you don't get any answer. So I am no expert on this, believe me. So I do urge you to do some of your own research. And if this video only gets you looking around the internet to find out what you actually really need to know, uh, then it's done its job. Uh, so um, obviously we've been through a state of dealers going under into administration um, and some large dealers going under that, that we wouldn't have expected it to, to happen to. Um, so it kind of got me thinking, well, you just never know um, if you're going to be in that situation where if you're one of the few people that's actually buying caravans at the moment, um, what do you do to protect yourself uh, against that happening? And like I said, um, having the horrible situation where you're phoning up trying to find your caravan and you just have to speak to the administrators. And 99.9% .9 of the time companies don't fail and there isn't any of these problems. So you'll find that if you've done some of these things, and the company isn't going into administration, then it's not a problem and everything will be nice and smooth and there'll be no problem whatsoever. But what happens if you have put a deposit down um, with a company that then goes into administration? Well, after doing a little bit of my own digging, um, you know, just searching around the internet this morning, um, I found that actually, unfortunately, you as the customer are kind of on the bottom of the food chain. So what, I think what happens is they'll go into administration and then the um, uh, people will come in and kind of try and sort it all out. They'll find out what assets they have and what money is in the bank and they'll start to pay off uh, the creditors um, uh, that, they owe that, uh, that the company owes money to um, first of all. Now uh, I think technically you have put a deposit down on a caravan which is an unsecured debt so or loan. Um, credit I can't remember which one it is anyway you know what I mean um, so unfortunately that means that everyone gets paid first that is secured and again technically I don't exactly know what that means but the, the, the gist of it is that you're on the bottom of the food chain so everyone gets paid out first and then if there's any money left it then goes to people who have got deposits or money outstanding um, but because it's unsecured then it is the last of the, uh, the debts to be paid off now again, I'm not sure what happens really, whether um, you know, the premises get sold and then this takes quite a while to happen. So that's, I think that's one thing to say is I think the very best scenario is that it's going to take ages to get any money back. The very worst scenario, I think, is that you don't get any money back at all. I think if you have your caravan there for a service or anything like that and you haven't paid any money uh, or you're picking it up, um, then I think that's relatively straightforward. Again, I'm not 100% sure on that. You may well have had experiences with that. I'm sure there's going to be people in the comments uh, that can tell me exactly what um, what the situation is there. But I'm fairly sure that you can um, go and pick your caravan up because they have no legal entitlement to it uh, because they were doing work on it and there was nothing, you know, you, you haven't paid them or they haven't paid you any money. So I think uh, you can go and pick your caravan up uh, at whatever date that the... Uh, administrators say that you can um, but again if that is incorrect then uh, let me know in the comments and I'll uh, then everyone else can read it as well like I said um, if you put a deposit down then it's going to be uh, at best a long time before you get it back at worst you won't get it back now that is the same as if you've paid the balance on your caravan now some bigger dealers will maybe ask you to pay the balance before you pick the caravan up uh, because it is less to do on the day and it, it eases the process through. So if you've paid the balance of your caravan uh, and you come to pick it up, then you do the handover and then off you go. Now, obviously, if you've paid the balance and you haven't picked your caravan up and then they do go into administration, 
um, then you're again in the same situation as if the deposit has been put down where at, at best it's going to take a long time to get it back at worst you won't see that figure back now that can be a significant amount of money i would have assumed because obviously some of the balances we see are quite high especially with the 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 cost of the caravans nowadays they're not small and also motomes i mean obviously you know that can be sky high um so i wouldn't want you to be in the position where you've paid the balance of a caravan or a motome uh, and then you cannot uh, reclaim that back uh, because the company's gone into administration now in theory you'd say well i've paid for the caravan therefore it's mine therefore i can pick it up but the problem is, is um, and, and I'll tell you why I think this in a, in a minute with the story that I'm going to tell you, um, that if the dealer hasn't paid Black Horse off or whoever is on the finance, um, whatever finance line they've got, if they haven't paid that off, then that means that Black Horse or DF or Capital uh, have still got a claim on that caravan. So technically, they've taken your money, but they haven't paid for that particular unit so whatever finance house has has got a title to uh, a title to that unit then then unfortunately they're probably not in the position where they're going to say okay that's not a problem here have your asset um because obviously it's just not like them to do that um so yeah so that could be an issue if you've paid a balance uh, whatever it happens to be and you haven't picked the caravan up if they paid it off the finance line and it's technically yours and then, then you may be okay but if they haven't paid it off the finance line then then you could be in uh, a bit of trouble expensive pops in your head when you say that doesn't it? Um, so uh, and also that that applies for pre-owned as well now there are a lot of the caravans are on finance lines uh, for new but also with pre-owned they can have a pre-owned finance line uh, the whatever dealer you're going to so just because it's a pre-owned doesn't mean it hasn't got a finance um, against it that that finance house is going to kind of take that caravan and, and try and do something else with it and and technically it's not yours um, so again you don't want to be in that position if you have been asked to pay the balance um, before you collect the caravan that could be a bit of a red flag that the, the company needs your money to kind of help the cash flow situation. Um, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Again, that might not be the case. It might be a, a, just the way that they do things and they've done that for years. So that might not be the case. But on hindsight, with some of the, the things I've heard, then you think, well, actually, that's maybe what they're trying to do. They're trying to just kind of keep hold of, of what's going on and get keep everything going by taking some money in from from other people um, and then paying other people off just to kind of keep afloat again I, I don't know if that is the case with any of these dealers that have gone under sorry I really shouldn't do this next to a train line so I don't know whether this is the case that they that, that they're doing that um, but if you're going to be negative about everything then then you know you could maybe think that that is the case but like I said it might not be it might be just the way to do things to make the the process a lot easier on that handover day now there is another worst case scenario after deposit and then balance part exchange now before I received this email I wouldn't have even thought about this now what's happened um, to this unfortunate person is that they were passing a particular dealership and um, they dropped their part exchange in just because it was easier to do. So when they picked the caravan up, they weren't kind of having to bring their caravan up with them and, and do all that change over there. So they brought the part exchange in prior to having a handover, uh, prior to the actual caravan being delivered. They'd also paid a £3,000 deposit as well. Um, and that's what the company had. Now, then when they went into administration, he thought, well, OK, worst case scenario, I haven't got my caravan. Um, I'll have to fight a little bit for my for my money back, um, but I'll go and pick my caravan up because technically they hadn't actually had their um, his part exchange been um, actually legally handed over. It wasn't theirs because he hadn't signed anything and hadn't seen a new caravan and the invoice hadn't been done. Um, but then he phoned up the um, the administrators of, of what was going on and unfortunately he was told that it isn't his caravan anymore um and again i was a bit shocked at this i, I didn't quite understand why i thought well you know you haven't done anything then i realized what they may well have done is put that 
part exchange straight onto a pre-owned finance line. So now Black Horse have got an entitlement to it. So they've had the caravan in, they've, they've um, uh, put it onto a finance line, uh, which typically you get 80% of the, um, uh, the trade value of from the finance company and then you pay um, you know interest for it to be there it frees up cash flow um, and I think quite a few dealers do that so they've put it straight onto a finance line and then had the money back from Black Horse and then obviously put that into the company and then the company's gone under and then there's no way of getting that back so as far as legally they're um, they're concerned that Black Horse actually own that part exchange caravan now obviously this was a bit of a shock to the customer because he hasn't actually handed anything over legally it's still his caravan uh, but now he's going to have to fight black horse to get that back and again i mean you know they're not they're not in the um uh, in the position where they're probably going to say okay that was a mistake um here's your caravan back and it was uh, not a, not an old caravan it wasn't very old um so it's a significant amount of money so at the moment he has lost uh, his caravan uh, and the three thousand pounds that he put down luckily he had not paid the balance so what can you do to avoid these situations uh, well first of all pay as little deposit as you can get away with I take 500 pound here if I've got the caravan here already or it's on the stocking plan it was coming in then I've already kind of um, put my name down to that caravan regardless of who bought it I haven't ordered that caravan in specifically. If I'd ordered the caravan in specifically, then I would generally take a larger deposit because if it's something I didn't really want or, or I could put on the forecourt, then it was a bit of a gamble to do. So I would ask for a little bit more of a deposit if it was something bespoke or something that I didn't really want on the forecourt. But if you've got it on the forecourt already, and um, or it's, it's coming to you, coming to the dealer regardless, then really I would say a 500 pound deposit is significant uh, an amount of funds for you not to change your mind and if you do change your mind then you've lost your 500 pound because they're non-refundable um, and even if the, the dealer has put it through the workshop well they're going to have to do that anyway so um, it just means they don't have to do it the next time so you, you know that, that's my point of view on it other dealers might have another point of view and they might be shouting at me through the lens and saying no that's not right um, but that's how I see it so 500 pound or a thousand pound I think on a caravan uh, is is a decent enough amount of money for you not to be you know just walking away willy-nilly uh, because if you um, do put deposit down on it they take it off of sale and they may have lost the ability to sell it to someone else um, and again 500 pound or a thousand pound that that um, gives them enough money to to cover that kind of bit of a loss uh, if you are um, but again with, with both homes that could be a lot different because obviously motomes are, are a lot higher value um, so they may well ask for a, for a bigger deposit on that but I would probably suggest getting away with as little deposit as you possibly can obviously pay it on a credit card you're going to have a lot more legal um, rights if you pay on a credit card than if you back it or if you pay on a debit card so pay as little as you can pay on the credit card uh, and then that will at least give you some protection uh, and limit the losses if you can't get it get, uh, get it back if they do go into administration i'd also say um don't pay any balances or anything extra you're just putting yourself at risk if they, again if they do go into administration then then you're you're going to struggle to get that back so don't be paying balances again with some motomes i mean you could be talking significant amounts of money well even caravans you know um you could be 20 30 thousand pounds as a, as a balance um and you don't really want to be you know given a company that could go under because anyone anyone could go under at any time um you know especially in in what's been going on recently with all the you know the well like i keep saying the crisis that's going on uh, so you, you just never know so it's best to err on the side of caution and i think if you speak to any one of the dealers they'd probably you know agree that it, you know it might feel a little bit offended I, I think i did once when someone said oh you could go under and you, you feel a bit personally offended but you know they, you could you know from their point from the customer's point of view they don't know us from adam really they don't know what's going on behind the scenes um there could be anything going on um, and you could just be about to fold and, and yeah, you're taking their money. So 
So um, yeah, don't be uh, worried about not paying balances. Just hold on to the money until you can physically see your product. Now, actually, it's a, it's a good practice to do anyway, even if the company is fine, because um, it's a lot easier to um, to not pay something if you see a problem with your caravan than it is to try and get your money back. So perhaps you've paid the, the, the balance and then you come and then there's something wrong with the caravan. They haven't done this or, I mean, I've even ordered the wrong model once. <laughs> so the customer came up and said, that's not the van I wanted. Um, so, you know, he hadn't paid his, his balance. So you know, we worked it out, but you know, anything can happen. So it's, it's actually good practice not to pay the balance because again, like I said, it's a lot easier to not pay something than it is to try and get something back off a dealer. Um, so it's good practice anyway. And then obviously in this situation and scenario, then it, you know, if they do go into administration and you haven't paid your, your balance, then you're in a much better position just to try and get your deposit back. And on the same uh, line, then don't take your part exchange in. Now, like I said, the, the thing that happened to this, this, this person, I've never heard of that before. And I was, you know, a bit shocked that that was, that was happening. Um, it hadn't occurred to me that that might be happening to try and kind of get cash flow to keep the business afloat. Um, but like I said, you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So um, I'll, I'll keep you posted with what happens there because it, it's, you know, it's a bit of an interesting one and a bit of a head scratch. And I didn't know how they're going to get out of it. He obviously he's talking to a solicitor, um, things like that. So um, I'll keep you posted on what happens there. But we don't want you to be in this situation where, you know, you are uh, um, giving money to a company that then goes into administration. To recap then, um, pay a small deposit and pay it on a credit card. Try not to pay a balance before you actually see the product that you're buying. Um, and on the day, you know, you, you can check everything over and you can make sure everything's okay, then you pay the balance. Uh, and don't take your part exchange into the dealer um, just in case they do something like putting it on the finance line where then you haven't got a legal entitlement to it. Those things I think will cover you um, if, and at least limit your liability if something does happen um, to the dealership and then you find yourself again speaking to an administrator and trying to get your money back. So again, I'm sorry for the, the, the doom and gloomy video, um, but I think it, you know, I, I kind of rushed this through because I thought, crikey, I hadn't even thought of that. This is um, where you could find yourself um, you know, in this position. Uh, in in the near future, if we do start to see other manu uh, sorry other dealers go into administration, and hopefully, fingers crossed, that's not going to happen. And this this whole video um, is completely a waste of time. But I'd rather it be that than people handing over lots of money and then finding themselves in a nasty position. So I think if you could share this, I don't think anyone else has said uh, talked about this on YouTube. I had a look at a, a few other videos recently. Uh, just to see if anyone else has already said this but i don't think they have and may well have um, but if you could share it on the forums and everything just to just to get people thinking and i would suggest do your own research as i say i, I i'm not an expert on this i could be wrong but if this video if all it does is bring this to your attention because again it shocked me this morning i i, I couldn't quite get my head around what was going on um, so if if all it does is get you thinking and, and then looking into this yourself then that's job done uh, so like I said if you can share it with as many people as you can like subscribe all the normal stuff that you, you have to do or you don't have to do um, but then you'll get access to the other videos that I'm going to be doing uh, later today so thank you very much and sorry about the train uh, and I'll see you next time hopefully with some brighter news <laughs>